Hey, what's up, you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my review of this week's episode of Game of Thrones, which was episode 3 of season 7 called The Queen's Justice. And uh, I just want to say right off the bat, this was just an incredible episode. Um, this, uh, <laughs> this season of Game of Thrones is certainly on the upswing. Uh, it started off uh, really well, you know, I did really like the premiere, you know, it just uh, successfully, successfully uh, re-immersed me back into the show. Um, second episode, uh, I liked even better last week, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, just the build up to uh, Daenerys and Jon's first meeting and everything. This episode, you know, as well as uh, Huron's Assault, you know, on uh, Theon and Yara and everything. Um, but this week's episode, <laughs> uh, let me tell you, I really, I, I, I loved it. Um, I rated last week's episode like around like 9.4, 9.6. This one I'm giving 9.7, 9.8, you know, I don't know. I could probably give it a 10 out of 10 just because there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And, and uh, everything's just coming together brilliantly in this uh, second to last season. Um, I guess I just reserve like 10 out of 10 episodes for like big emotional, you know, payoffs or, you know, deaths or something like that, I guess, I, I don't know, um, but really a pretty much flawless, flawless episode, um, Game of Thrones is, I already use this, uh, I, I already use this, uh, adjective or, uh, word to describe it, you know, uh, brilliant, um, but just everything, you know, the Daenerys and Jon's, uh, meeting, their conversations, um, Really well written, really you know, of course, well acted by Kit Harrington and Amelia Clark. Um, I just felt you know tense throughout that entire scene. Um, my body, I just felt like I felt like I don't know, I don't want to say butterflies, but like it felt like uh, anxiety, I guess, for some reason. Um, so yeah, it was really a well done and effective scene, and like I was saying last week, it's like a big crossover in the show's world, because these characters have been so important for so long, yet separate for the entire series. Um, so I thought that was great, and I'm not going to try and uh, repeat a lot of the dialogues and back and back and forths here. Um, but of course, uh, Daenerys wants Jon to bend the knee, um, whereas Jon is trying to warn her the bigger picture and everything like that while also trying to stand for his people and be what his people uh, chose him as really um, and it is hard for uh, Daenerys uh, you know I, I do think Daenerys is, can sometimes be a little bit too wrapped up in uh, power I think she's a, being a little bit too much with that angle right now um, a lot of people have been uh, complaining about that actually just messing with my hair for some reason <laughs> um but at the same time, you know, uh, Tyrion makes a good point about why people just don't believe things they don't see and why they their minds just need to focus on, you know, what's in front of them, I guess. And I'm, I'm explaining it the completely wrong way, but I just love the conversation between Tyrion and Jon on the cliff. Um, you know, kind of a moment, another moment of honesty between the two. I love their reunion, by the way. Um, I, I just, uh, you know, really appreciate that after all these seasons. Um... Luckily, Tyrion is able to, to to at least talk Daenerys into uh, letting Jon mine the supply of dragon glass they have at Dragonstone, um, so at least they can start forging weapons to fight against the White Walkers when they arrive. Um, so there's that, and uh, yeah, I think that's a good step. You know, uh, Tyrion sort of uh, you know talks her into this being a way of keeping Jon occupied while she deals with uh, Cersei. But really, I think this is also a way for Tyrion to sort of start mending the fences, or start, you know, maybe say up a more peaceful resolution between the two in the future. Um, this is a step to meet somewhere on common ground, I guess. And again, it was just really, really intense, you know. I didn't think either of them were going to die here, but I was still nervous. And again, I think that it speaks to uh, how well done this show is. And uh, Cersei, a uh, absolutely uh, sinister and brilliant mastermind. Um, and I loved what she did with uh, Oberyn's wife, and her not wife, but you know, lover, however you want to put it. <laughs> um, you know, Cersei. You know, she's uh, the biggest villain left on the show. She's been one of the biggest, if not the biggest, villain throughout the entire series, arguably, um, just depending on you know who you ask. Um, but last season I rooted for her against, you know, uh, Marjorie and the High Sparrow, and this season I was happy to see her uh, get her just her uh, vengeance for her daughter and everything. Um, 
So there's cases where you really love to hate her, but then there's little things like this where you actually uh, root for her, and you know, I'm still kind of surprised by that. Um, you know, what, no matter what you think of Cersei as a person, you know, she's not a very good person, I'm not going to say that. Um, but you can't deny that she was kind of due to be able to do this, I think. Um, and just the way she was describing all the ways she thought about killing, you know, both her and uh, the lesser writing Sand Snake, her daughter. Um, I just thought it was just very well, uh, again, very well written and well acted by Lena Headey. She's just uh, amazing in the role. Um, I expect Cersei to die at the end of the season, but I hope she's around for as long as possible because she's just so masterfully, uh, masterfully uh, played. Um, and meanwhile, you have the, you know, also a Theon had been uh, pulled up by some of the remaining, you know, allies and everything like that, and they're just very, you know, disappointed in him pretty much. As he said, uh, if Theon really tried to uh, protect his sister, he wouldn't uh, still be alive, basically. Um, so, I don't know, Tian's probably going to sulk with himself for a while, and I expect Theon to go out some, like, grand sacrifice at the end of the season or something. I, I don't know. Um, you know, again, with that PTSD you faced with Theon last week. Uh, but meanwhile, he had that uh, back and forth, uh, you know, plan, you know, with uh, Tyrion going to, you know, sending the Unsullied to Castle Rock. Uh, he really had an ace up his sleeve with that, you know, sewer entrance, you know, into the into the area. Um, but little little did he know that uh, they had already sort of maneuvered something else in their favor. You know, the Lannisters, of course, they're you know, still uh, Tywin's army and they haven't been around that long for nothing and Cersei <laughs> learned a great deal from him um, so they are actually able to uh, sort of just let him have Castle Rock, let him have that small victory while they combine their army and you know, just build a you know, bigger one and they're able to uh, take out another one of Daenerys' allies and the Tyrells um, Jaime gives her a merciful death uh, you know, ever drink something that's going to be a little bit uh, painless for her um, but uh, she's able to spit back in Jamie's face, uh, wanting him to make sure Cersei knows that she's the one that poisoned Joffrey. Uh, you know, so I thought that was all really well handled, and again, just great dialogue in that scene. Um, so, yeah, and then there's also uh, Euron, you know, showing off and just, you know, celebrating in his victory, of, you know, for who he captured, and basically just taunting Jamie, oh, I'm probably going to fuck Cersei, so... You know, this is all I want to do to her. So, yeah, Euron's definitely going to die at the end of the season, for sure. Um, but he's de he definitely knows how to run, you know, the, the fleet, for sure. It's definitely going to be a challenge, and uh, Daenerys is wanting to, uh, you know, send her dragons, you know, to wipe out the fleet. I have a feeling they might have, like, some of those spear weapons uh, that Cersei has shown. Because um, I think one, one of them at least might actually be brought down, unfortunately. I don't know. But it's definitely not as easy as Daenerys uh, is uh, assuming right now. I think she's she, she's a little bit overconfident right now. She's a little bit she's acting like overly entitled right now, which I think John's had some good points against her. <laughs> Although he didn't say it like that, but again, just great back and forth between the two. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely love this episode, rating it at least like a 9.7, 9.8 out of 10. Uh, let me know guys thought about this one. I'm sure there's more I didn't talk about. Also, uh, Jorah, you know, being able to leave looks like uh, Sam's procedure is successful. But he still has to, you know, make copies of old books. <laughs> uh, but I think he did gain respect from the Archmeister, so that, I think that's going to go somewhere eventually. So, uh, yeah, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Also, Bran and Sansa reuniting was nice, but he was fairly creepy in that forest scene. <laughs> Um, you know, just the way he uh, let her know that he uh, is this three-eyed raven, you know, letting her know what she was wearing that night. <laughs> um, he's coming across a little bit creepy. I know he's supposed to be talking like that, but it's a little bit awkward right now. Um, but yeah, yeah, catch you guys next time. Peace.